What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video and today I am back with my second shop tour. So I did one I think about a year and a half ago and things have definitely changed quite a bit since that tour and I've gotten a couple people asking me for these shop tours so I figured I'd go ahead and do one. Last year I started here by the garage door and I, I think that's a good place to start because anytime I get lumber this is where it's coming in. Basically I back my truck up and whether that's full sheets of plywood or rough lumber then I kind of unload it from the truck and then start processing it. So the two tools I use the most to kind of break down rough stuff is going to be the table saw and the miter saw. Uh, my table saw is the saw stop ICS three horsepower. I upgraded that probably about a year ago now and I really like it. It's got a lot more power than my previous one even though it's only like one and a quarter horsepower more it just feels a lot more powerful i'm running this on 220 versus the last one was on 110 definitely liking that more also have this new uh, overarm dust collection here which is kind of a new thing from saw stop it's nice because it hooks up to a four inch dust port which means i can have two four inch ports connected to this saw it means pretty good dust collection because the table saw is kind of notorious for being tricky to collect the dust so works really well it's on a mobile base i have pretty much everything in this shop on a mobile base. I really like to be able to move stuff around even though I don't do it that much. That's the table saw. I also have the Rockler crosscut sled which I just kind of stick underneath the table saw. Uh, I love that crosscut sled. I use it quite a bit. Uh, as far as like push sticks and table saw accessories, I've got the one that came with the saw which I don't really like these things. I think they're kind of weird. I use this one the most. I don't even know what this is called. I'll put a link to it in the video description but I love this push stick. It's got this really nice grippy section on the bottom and it's got this little spring loaded kind of of pull on the end that kind of helps you push things through the saw and the nice thing about it being spring-loaded is no matter how thick your piece is even if it's quarter inch or eighth inch thick it'll just get out of the way and still give you that kind of hook which is really really nice I also have the micro jig gripper I don't use this that much I actually have a lot of problems with these things slipping when I'm pushing stuff through um, they are great for if you're ripping thin strips and still secure them and, and hold them really well when you're using the saw and then the last table saw accessory I use a good bit is this featherboard this this is the hedgehog really like this thing it's super quick to adjust it kind of has this uh, spiral shape to it and so you just sit it in the miter track adjust it to be up against your piece and then lock it down and it works really well so that's definitely a good accessory from there i guess let's move over to the miter saw uh, obviously this is the j baits miter saw station i built a couple years ago love this thing i use the festool capex miter saw very nice miter saw obviously pretty expensive but it's super super accurate i actually use my miter saw in place of what a lot of people would use a crosscut sled for and I get really accurate results out of it so definitely like having a pretty dialed in miter saw uh, I do use the fast cap best fin system with the J Bates miter saw station really love this thing it works extremely well it's very accurate um, other than that I've just got some kind of various storage here I've got some finishing supplies sandpaper uh, cordless nailers glue that kind of thing and then <laughs> kind of various stuff up on the top of this really this could use a little bit better organization but you know whatever it, it works for me the one other kind of interesting thing with the miter saw is i have it hooked up to a dust extractor which is over in the corner and that works really well from the miter saw then we've got uh my assembly table which this was a build video i'm trying to think this was probably like six seven months ago now and i am absolutely loving this thing obviously got tons of rockler t-track here uh, the functionality on this table is just awesome got a bunch of drawers here uh, i've got all these rockler t-track accessories here got the bench cookies uh, i've got some clamps in here i have got some right angle clamps a um, bunch of <laughs> bandy clamps just a few of those uh, and then i've got the air hose reel here which is really really convenient and then i've got some air accessories got my aero nailers a pneumatic riveter you know kind of the air tool accessories here and then i've got just some various stuff down here more nails uh, than the workbench casters which attach to these caster plates so i can move the workbench but i love this thing uh, it's been a super popular plan for me i know a lot of you guys have built it if you guys built one of these i'd love to see pictures of it so shoot me a message on Instagram or email me or whatever and uh, I'd love to see you know you guys making this so uh, the other really nice feature about this assembly table is all of the sustainer storage on the side I, I use a lot of festival stuff so it's nice to be able to store those uh, but then I've also got my festival dust extractor with the boom arm here and the really nice thing about this is that this hose reaches all the way across my assembly table and the really nice thing about festival stuff is the power cords come off 
So I can just swap out, you know, to the domino, to the router, to my track saw, whatever. And the boom arm works extremely well. So that's been kind of a newer addition as well. And then I've got this kind of triangle of milling as I call it. So I've got the jointer, I've got the planer, and then I've got the table saw. And when I'm milling rough lumber, those are the three tools I'm using the most. I start on the jointer, get one clean edge and one clean face, move over to the planer, get the other face parallel and nice and cleaned up, and then finish on the table saw and rip it to width. And having these three tools kind of arranged like this makes it really easy, especially having a table like this next to it. That way I can sit the boards here while I'm milling and it just goes really, really quick. Uh, obviously these are the Powermatic jointer and planer. It's the PJ882HH and the Powermatic 15HH for the planer. Uh, both of them are helical head. That's what the HH stands for in the model number, but upgrading to helical head jointer and planers have been a total game changer in my woodworking for sure. Highly, highly recommend those. Absolutely love the helical heads on both those machines. And it's really nice to have that little bit wider of a surface on the planer. The 15 inch planer is, is pretty nice. So I guess from there, let's turn around and go to the workbench. I know a lot of you guys saw that I had built the Rubo uh, a while ago in a video, uh, but then I ended up getting sent this workbench from Joburg's. And so this is a super nice workbench. It's made in Europe. Uh, it's all solid beach. It's got some super nice vices on it. Um, one nice thing is since I'm left-handed, I like my vice on this side uh, and, and they know that, you know, people are going to want to adjust that. So they have mounting locations on both sides. The thing I think I really love the most about this bench is all the storage it has down below. It's got all these drawers. Um, it's got, you know, these big open sections. I've got my sharpening station down here, which I'm actually going to do a video on next week. So stay tuned for that. Um, but it's just really nice to have all that storage. Obviously it's got the dog holes, which I really love using, but it's just super beefy. It's not going anywhere, which is exactly what you want in a workbench. And sitting on top of the workbench, in case you're wondering, is the tabletops for the Wood Whisperer Guild project I'm working on right now. I guess I really haven't mentioned that on this channel much yet, but in case you guys aren't familiar, the Wood Whisperer Guild is a super in-depth kind of course style of video content where you purchase the course and then uh, you're gonna learn every little aspect of building that project. And so I'm doing a table with a reclaimed oak top and a steel base, and it's got an extension hardware built in so you can add leaves and remove leaves. And so it's a really cool project. I'm kinda probably 75% done with it. Kind of been building it in the background and uh, it's going really well. Obviously behind me, I've got the awesome French cleat wall, which I think has been one of the better additions to my shop in the past year. Uh, it's allowed me to have a ton of organization. I love having all my clamps and you know some of the hand tools I use and, and my drills and stuff like that all readily accessible. Got my 100K YouTube silver play button up here. We've got my glass sign that I made um, with Brad from Fix This Build That. And I've also got this drill charging station over here. Um, this is from my buddy Andy Glass. He makes and sells these. It goes together in like 15 minutes and obviously holds a ton of stuff. I've got a bunch of chargers, drill bits, uh, drills. Uh, and then over here against the sidewall of the miter saw station, I've got kind of my sticker wall going. So if you guys want to send me a sticker, you know, message me on Instagram or something and, and we'll get that worked out. But I also have all my safety gear here. So I've got my dust mask, my respirator here, my safety glasses, and then typically my headphones are over here too, but they're charging. Uh, I use the Isotunes headphones exclusively. Uh, from there, I guess let's loop around and come over to the bandsaw and the drum sander. And so this is kind of a bit of an odd orientation and I'm still not sure if I love it, but it definitely works because with the bandsaw, I don't really need any room on this side of it. So having it kind of butted up against the jointer works pretty well. This is a new bandsaw for me, relatively new. Uh, another Powermatic unit, really love this bandsaw. It's a lot more powerful than my previous one. It's got much better fence, much better guides. Uh, it's got a foot brake, so if I need to turn it off quickly, I can. It's got dual dust ports. It's, it's just a much, much nicer bandsaw than the one I had before. And then behind that, I've got the drum sander, obviously another Powermatic machine. Uh, this, again, works awesome. I think the in-feed and out-feed support are outstanding. The one nice thing, too, is this drum head is kind of offset, favoring the out-feed side, and so that way you have a lot more in-feed room. You know, it just doesn't get underneath the roller as quickly, so you've got room to kind of arrange things before they start getting sanded, which is really nice. It's also got a digital readout so you know exactly how much material has been taken off. So I guess while we're over here surrounded by Powermatic tools, I want to say a big shout out to Powermatic for sponsoring this video. Uh, obviously, these Powermatic tools have been a massive upgrade for me and I think have really improved my woodworking over the past year or so that I've been working with them and I just couldn't be happier with them. So if you guys want to learn more about Powermatic, 
Powermatic and their full line of tools. Check out the link in the video description below. And thanks to Powermatic for sponsoring this video. So behind that, I've got just some other like circular saw tracks, uh, outfeed rollers, saw horses, that kind of thing, an unfinished <laughs> Nelson bench that I never got around to finishing. I guess also while we're over here, I get a lot of questions about my camera gear. I use this pretty beefy Manfrotto tripod, but then the thing I get asked the most about is what slider do I use? And so this is the Edelkrone Slider Plus. The nice thing about this unit is it slides twice as much as its width. So you really get a lot of slide. Uh, it's a motorized slider. It works extremely well, very, very smooth. Here on the floor is my hollow chisel mortiser. Picked this thing up used off of Craigslist. Obviously having tools on the floor is not ideal. They get banged into and also it's just a pain to use them. So that'll be a project upcoming as well. So from here, let's kind of move into this hallway, which is kind of the more random things in this shop. I don't really know what this thing was intended for, for the person who made this house, but it has worked out just perfectly for me. Uh, it's long and narrow. It's like 28 feet long and seven feet wide, which is kind of an awkward size, uh, but it has ended up being perfect for those long and narrow tools and, and things I have, like for instance, this lumber rack. Obviously that's a great thing that can tuck up against this wall. There's my spindle sander, which I <laughs> said was on the ground, which will end up going on that, sh on that uh, flip top cart. I've got my router table. I've got my plywood sheet goods cart here, my lathe. I've got another dust collector back here just because it's such a long run from my dust collector back here that I just got another little dust collector. This is the Rockler uh, wall mount dust collector, which has worked great. It's perfect for the router table and the lathe and the CNC. Um, and then speaking of the CNC, at the end of the hallway, I've got my Inventables X-Carve. And so it just couldn't have worked out better the amount of space I had here. This uh, Rockler kind of shop stand holds the X-Carve perfectly. This is the 60 by 48 shop stand. As you can see, it's almost like it was meant for the X-Carve, uh, but that's been a really nice upgrade. It's a lot beefier than my old one. It's super sturdy. I'm gonna add a second shelf on the bottom there. So I'm running it on a Mac Mini that I found on Craigslist for like a hundred bucks. Came with a cheap old uh, flat screen monitor. And so that's how I run the X-Carve. And it's nice to be able to have an inexpensive computer out in the shop to run these kind of things because they do get dusty. And so if this thing ends up getting damaged in some way, it's not a huge deal. So very happy with the X-Carve. I think it's a great beginner entry level CNC, but you can really do a lot with it. I mean, you guys have seen my videos on it. Definitely like that. So from here, let's move up to, I guess the, uh, the front and check out my dust collector. That's something I didn't really cover while we were up front. So let's touch base on that. So this is my dust collector. This is the Clearview CV1800. I've got a whole video on my dust collection system if you guys wanna learn more about that, but this has been another huge, huge upgrade for me. If you guys remember, I was using the Oneida little mini gorilla, kind of their portable dust collector before, and it worked well, but it doesn't even hold a candle to something like this. Being able to have every one of my tools kind of ducted in, uh, having the IVAC glass gate so everything turns on and off automatically, it's just really nice. And, and the dust control in here is outstanding. It collects to a 35 gallon trash can that then I just empty into a garbage bag and throw away the shavings and it's pretty easy. I mean, if I'm doing a, a big milling operation, I will have to empty the trash can a couple times. I kind of wish I had mounted this thing a little higher so I could get a 55 gallon drum under there, but otherwise it's working out extremely well. I did use PVC for the duct work and it has yet to explode and cause a dust fire like so many commenters said. So I just, again, think that that's total BS. Uh, and I know a lot of guys who use PVC as well and it's been totally fine. So here behind these five sheets of plywood, I have my laser cutter. So this is the full spectrum Muse. Um, this thing is a really cool laser. It's got a camera built in so you can kind of see exactly where things are inside. Uh, it works over Wi-Fi or via ethernet, which I have a, another old laptop set up here, um, but it works great. And then it exhausts out. And funny enough, I've got this exhaust pipe here for the laser and there just happens to be a little cat door in this door going out of the shop, which just ends up being absolutely perfect for the laser cutter. So in case you guys have a laser cutter and need a creative way to exhaust it, try a cat door. You can just stick your uh, dryer vent hose out there and it works perfectly. So I guess from here, let's circle back around. Uh, we can check out the drill press and then we can kind of look at the metalworking side. So this is the Nova drill press. I think it's the Voyager, Nova Voyager. But the coolest thing about this is that it's got this menu system where you can dial in your speed based on the type of bit you're using. So let's say we're using a Forstner bit and let's say it's, I don't know, two inches and we're going into hardwood. 
it automatically knows what RPM it needs to be and then sets the drill to that speed, which is really cool. There's no belts to direct drive motor, so very cool drill press for sure. I've got the Woodpecker's drill press table on here, which I absolutely love. I use a lot of Woodpecker stuff in this shop, as you've probably seen. I've got a bunch of Woodpecker squares. I've got the Woodpecker's router table. Uh, obviously really dig their stuff. It's super precise, well-made, made in the US, which is really nice, and uh, really dig their stuff. Now, this is another thing I wanna work on. I really need a better system for this but I've got you know all my spray paints my uh, clear coats I've got a few stains that I really almost never use and probably need to get rid of those are getting pretty old now but I don't try to keep a lot of finishes on hand I only use probably three or four really regularly and uh, yeah so try to keep those to a minimum um, here on the floor under this pile of stuff is my spray system. Uh, this is my Fuji, the Q3. Uh, it's a great HVLP sprayer. You guys have seen me use that a bunch in the past. So if you're looking for an HVLP system, I highly recommend Fuji. So I guess from here, that kind of covers all the woodworking stuff. So let's move to the metalworking side of the shop, which is a side I really want to get better organized this year. I, I think I said that in the last shop tour video a year and a half ago. It, it's definitely better than it was, uh, but I still think there's a lot of room for improvement. So let's go over here. So I've got this Milwaukee kind of big shop tool cabinet thing here, which works well. Um, it's got this workbench top that, I don't know, it's not ideal for this. I, I wish it was a little bit deeper. Uh, I wish it was a little bit longer. Uh, I've got my Fear belt grinder attached to that. I absolutely love this thing. I have dreams of becoming a knife maker at some point and having a belt grinder is pretty much essential for that. But even not doing knife making, just having a belt grinder when you're doing general metalworking is very, very useful. Also have a good vise mounted to the workbench here which is again kind of essential when you're doing metalworking having a good vice for work holding is awesome uh, and then over here this is kind of a very new addition to the shop it's this ZT fabrications cart and so this is ZT fab the nice thing is this one thing will hold three of my welders or I guess two welders and a plasma cutter in basically the same footprint as my old kind of welding carts so where I had three of those next to each other which you can imagine how much space that was taken up so this is really nice that it kind of uses the vertical space a lot better. It's got organization for your cables, which every welding cart should have. I don't know why they don't all come with that, but super useful to have that. It's on very nice casters, so it rolls in and out extremely easily, but it just holds everything I need for my welding, and I really love it. Um, another big welding upgrade I did was this welding table from weldtables.com. Love this thing. It's super flat. Uh, it's got tons of work holding options. I've got, actually got some hold down clamps coming for that today just having a nice solid welding table is great before i was using an ikea table which was wooden and painted so it kept lighting on fire this one i can weld directly on it clamp to it so i don't have to clamp my ground clamp to the piece i'm working on so that is really really nice addition some of the other metal working tools i've got my metal chop saw down here it's a good saw i think i would like to upgrade to one of the uh, kind of more bandsaw style metal saws this year i just like that they're a little bit more accurate i think and just cut a little cleaner. Um, I also have another drill press here that's kind of dedicated to metal. Since I have that nice woodpecker's drill press table on the other one, I don't want that thing getting covered in oil and metal shavings and that kind of thing. So I just have this drill press set up exclusively for metal drilling. It works well because I can just keep my metal drilling bits over here, my cutting oil, that kind of thing, and just very convenient. Behind the drill press, I have the forge, and I don't think I've turned on the forge since the last shop tour, so that should probably tell you that the forge is gonna need to get sold here. I, I just, I don't think I am gonna be doing that much blacksmithing. So probably unfortunately gonna be getting rid of that one. So if you're interested in a forge and anvil and are in the Asheville area, hit me up. Um, the one kind of last thing on this metalworking side and one of the greatest additions to the shop this year has been the mini split. That is just such an awesome thing to have in the shop. Obviously it's a huge luxury, but this is my job. I spend tons of time out here. So having an option for heating and cooling is great. So I guess from here, let's move back over the workbench and we can get it closed out. All right, so thanks for watching y'all. Hopefully you enjoyed this shop tour. If you got any questions about any of the tools I use in the shop, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I try to respond to every single comment I get on my videos. Also, before we leave, I wanna give a big shout out to Isotunes who are the exclusive hearing protection
protection provider in my shop. They have these new headphones that I am loving. These are the Isotunes Extra. These are perfect. They've got better battery life. They sound awesome. Definitely go check those out. I'll have a link in the video description to those. Also, I'll have links to pretty much all the tools I showed in this video in case you guys are interested. And last, if you haven't seen it already, I added the YouTube sponsor feature to the channel. It's five bucks a month. It allows you to get behind the scenes access to one exclusive vlog post a month, exclusive live streams, all kinds of stuff. So check out the sponsor button below the video or on the screen here if you guys are interested in that. Thanks again for watching everybody and until next time, happy building.